Hey there, welcome to Synth Seeker. My name is Luke. Uh, today's another production log. I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, and one of um, one of you all said, I really like these. And that's the first time I've ever gotten feedback that said someone like this. So now you get another one. So if you want to blame someone, uh, I won't give you his name, but you can blame one of your own. <laughs> if you're on the Discord with us, uh, you can figure out who that is. But uh, so all I wanted to do today was just give a couple status updates, uh, a couple gear updates, and uh, and talk about, um, I want to talk about the, this thing over here. Uh, this, this deadly beast, this micro freak. I am liking this more and more. I, this is an excellent, excellent synthesizer. Uh, and more people need this. I'm sorry about the shaky cam on the handheld, but uh, I don't have a, uh, oh, what is it? One of the, uh, the little rigs that, uh, keeps it from shaking too much. Anyway, I'm going to talk about this a little bit today. All right. And I'm going to talk about some gear, specifically that chorus pedal uh, behind it, why it's actually going to go away. Uh, and there's a couple other things I want to talk about. Um, I was going to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about some studio prep stuff. I want to talk about uh, templates, specifically how I set mine up just at a very high level. Uh, if you're using Ableton Live and you're not using templates to make your workflow faster, um, you should. <laughs> Basically, I'm going to say why, where I find value in that, and you can try it. And if you find value in that, great. If not, hey, do your own thing. Uh, and then lastly, I wanted to show you a synthesis technique, um, uh, something you could do with your envelopes, specifically the release of your envelopes. Envelope release is something that often gets sort of, eh, just set it and forget it. Don't worry about it. You know, it's either all the way open, uh, all the way shut generally for a lot of people who want that organ sort of close off. Um, but sometimes you can do some interesting performance techniques that rely on release time. Um, and I just want to cover that very briefly. It's not earth shattering. Uh, or amazing, but it might be useful to you. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So this is uh, this is my sort of working template. Uh, I've got a track for each of the pieces of hardware I use, uh, and then you know you can do that per hardware, or you know if you've got a set of soft synths you like to use, or if you're emulating you know a band, uh, and you know you want bass, guitar, drum, synth, whatever, you know you'll have those tracks. In Ableton, if you set that stuff up, you can save these things as a template. Okay, save as template. It's something we ignore. A lot of people, I ignored it for years. I just, you know, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just open a new project and just put my stuff back in there. Set up your tracks the way you want, uh, and then save it as a template so that when you open it up, they're there. Because you could save things like, uh, in your template, the settings for patches on your synthesizers. You could put them into clips and set the bank and patch on a clip. Or I use um, a little Max for Live device of various flavors um, for setting uh, my, actually, let's go to a synth that actually uses presets. Matriarch isn't one of those. Let's go look at the Micro Freak here. So on the Micro Freak, I've got this little patch control for bank and patch, and you can set these. Save that as part of the template to an init patch or, you know, your favorite sort of general purpose, you know, bass or lead or whatever, so that when it comes up and your template opens up, boom, your synths are there. You don't have to go rummaging around through all your patches looking for the sound you want to use when you're going to start working, right? Now, in a previous video, linked in the corner, I talk about my workflow, and I separate out uh, sound design, set design, composing, um, and then recording. Uh, I'm glossing over a little bit. You can go watch that video. But I set up my sounds in advance, right? I go through all of my synths when I'm, um, when I'm sort of exploring the synth. Actually, I'm bringing this back up. One of the things I am doing with the Micro Freak right now is going through all of the patches and deleting the ones that are not of interest to me. Um, and that may seem drastic, but honestly, you can always put them back. But on this particular synth, a lot of the um, a lot of these patches have sequences that are actually what's driving the patch. So this is a cool patch. It sounds 
interesting, but it's because there's an interesting sequence on top of a sound that's meh, maybe good, maybe mediocre. Um, and I also find it incredibly annoying when I'm going through patches when, when I do a patch change, if my transport's running, <laughs> the patch imme- sequence immediately starts playing. That bugs the shit out of me. Anyway, so I go through my synths. I basically, do, you know, keep the things I like, delete the things I don't, clear up some space, uh, and then I'll start taking apart sounds um, or categorizing the ones that exist uh, into, you know, bases, leads, whatever. I may group them if it supports, you know, moving them around in the banks and stuff like that. Um, and then I'll start eventually digging in, read the manual, start learning how to program the thing. The number one thing I do is figure out how to make it a knit patch. If you can, you know, that should be step one. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so templates, all right? So you can save your template with the tracks of the instruments you like. Of those tracks can have all of the devices set up in a default way. So you've got all of your tools set up at your fingertips um, and you can have the default patches and things like that set up. It's a small thing I know. And maybe it's like, hey, Captain Obvious, I know about that already. Go for it. Uh, I did not know about it for years. I, from like Ableton version five through eight, I think I wasn't using templates. Um, and now that I have them, they're great. Another thing you can do is if you're making use of the user library over here, um, once you have a track set up and maybe you've got this file, uh, this saved as a template, you can actually drag the entire track. And, I'll, and that this is the track, all of the instrument and definitions and um, uh, uh, devices in the strip, plus any clips that are there, and drop that over into a folder of track templates in the library. Okay, so I've basically got this set up so that it's my hardware for Wave 2. So this track is my Wave 2 track. It's got all the MIDI devices I like. It's got my external instrument device set up with the right port, the right channel, the right inputs back from it, the level if needed to be, you know, some sensor run a little hotter than others, default patch, things like that. You can actually drag this out, save it in your user library. So instead of having a file, that's a big template, right? Maybe you just want a folder that's only your instruments, right? The near your default instruments that you're going to pull in and they're actually tracks. And here's a little tip when you drag, normally when you drag stuff in, you just drop it on a track. When you are dragging in a track, it gives you the no, I cannot drop here unless you go up into the header. And now when you're in the track headers, you can drop an entire track in there. Okay. Um, what would be an example of that? Oh yeah, here's one that's not in. I'm not actually using this any for the foreseeable future, but this Rick bass, right? If I drop it, I can't drop it on the tracks, but I can drop it up in the header and boom, instantly loads my bass. Right? That's set to my favorite preset within it. It's got all my devices, my effects in there, and it just boom, it adds it. Uh, and this works with external hardware too. So if you're, you've got to set routings, some people, you know, have dynamic routings. They've got, they're changing the channels and things like that, that their synths are running on all the time. I do not. Once I've got a synth set to a MIDI channel and an audio input channel, I never change it. Right? So you can save these as templates. Anyway, so let's get rid of that. I'm not using that base for, for the next few releases. All right. So. Templates, super useful. The other thing is you can do device templates. So I've got a bunch of devices down here. So these are my pitch and velocity tools device. This is a MIDI instrument rack, all right? And inside it, I have a pitch device and a velocity device. I've got these mapped to some macros, like I wanna set pitch. Sometimes you wanna adjust the minimum and maximum velocity. Like uh, if you've got a sample library or a synth where you like what it does when you're playing your synth, you like the, um, the sounds it generates, except for when you really hit that maximum velocity. Uh, you don't, it gets a little screechy maybe, or you don't like maybe your sample plays a layer that you don't like. You could just dial that out by saying, okay, I want you to play full range, except I don't want you to actually get all the way up to 127. I want you to stop at 126. That's something I do um, fairly often. Um, and so I've got these devices set in here. I've got them set as macros. And then I make some snapshots. So this is like an octave switch uh, for this particular synth. It just lets me say go up two octaves, one octave, 
don't transpose at all, right? Right? It's really fast. Right? What is this? Uh, this is the Minotaur. All right, so Minotaur actually has a limit to how high it can go. Now we're really deep. Anyway, so having these set as templates as well, you can save them by clicking on the little disk icon. Does anyone remember three and a half inch floppies? All the, all the millennials, that's what that icon is. It's a three and a half inch floppy disk from back in the day. Uh, what was it? 1.44 megabytes of storage. Um, let's see. So we've got the set template. We've got track templates. We have device templates. All right. Um, make use of those. They're super useful. All right. Next uh, sort of topic, production lock. All right, I've got an EP coming out. It's away at the mastering house right now. Um, I'll actually do a release video when that when that comes out, but it's a three song EP. It's very much prog rock, a little bit of Berlin School influence, um, and I'm super, super happy with it. Uh, and you've heard little snippets of it over the last year and a half or so. I am an incredibly slow worker. I average about four years between releases, um, album-like releases. So, And this one's just an EP. Um, so three songs, there's like a, there's like a four minute song, a six minute song and a, a 10 minute song. And that's, that's coming. So, uh, because that's done, I'm going to, and that's very proggy with a lot of bass guitar on it. I'm dropping the bass guitar for the foreseeable future, as I said earlier. So, um, we're going to go hard, hard into Berlin school for the next couple of releases. Uh, what else? Let's go back to this thing. Okay. Let's talk about the micro freak. Um, I really, really like the synth. The fact that it's dry is totally acceptable. In fact, I would much rather have a synth with no effects built in, and then I can apply them in the box, um, than, uh, than have a synth with substandard sort of crappy, you know, bolted on effects. Uh, so if we look at this micro freak, right, that's a very, That, you know, that sort of sawtooth patch playing fifths. One oscillator at root, one oscillator fifth up. Right. You can hear the LFOs kind of making the, the filter breathe a little bit. And it's reacting to pressure as far as moving the filter as well. So it's really expressive. I like that. And then it really just comes down to adding some effects to it, right? So um, my, my stable of effects here, I throw a phaser on it. <laughs> I love that aftertouch. Um, I'll put a phaser. Uh, we'll put some delay on it. Like uh, this is a sort of Ableton's analog. Right? And so our echoes are sort of getting some stereo separation. The micro freak is a monophonic, uh, not monophonic, a um, mono synth as in not stereo. Uh, here's a, something I like to deal with when, I, when I've got a synth that's mono, not stereo. Um, I really like the, this dimension D. Uh, Roland makes a pedal, uh, the dimension C pedal. You can find them uh, online, for, you know, used. They're built like tanks, so if you find a used one, grab it if it's a reasonable price. Uh, or you can get a new one. They reissued it. Um, uh, the Waza, uh, the Boss Waza Craft Dimension C, which I, I've got one on the floor over there, actually. It's, they're excellent. But now you can also get the rack. Those, that pedal's modeled after this old rack unit, the chorus. Um, the Dimension D from Roland, and this is Arturia's clone of it, and it's great. Um, and I know it says chorus, it is it is a chorus, but it doesn't give you, you wouldn't use this for chorus effects the way you would think like Roland Jazz Chorus. The Juno Chorus is, is nothing like this. Um, this chorus, it's sort of sole reason to be, for the most part, the thing I use it the most for, uh, is that it introduces some really interesting stereo separation, subtle, but nice. So if we turn this here, we'll go with off here. 
actually. Let's turn off the delay too. So here it is. All right, mono signal, a little phaser going on there. Let's add the chorus. All right, and that can actually get more subtle than that. So here we are without. You know, it's not too crazy, right? It's definitely a chorus effect, but it's, it's sort of stressing stereo separation rather than the wavy sort of chorus that you'd expect. Um, I like it a lot. So, so anyway, we go back, we take the micro freak, which has no internal effects. We run it into our box. We uh, put these effects on it. What do we got? Phaser chorus delay. And then we'll throw a little reverb on it as well. I'm laying it on real thick here. We probably don't need it to be this thick. So I'm loving the micro freak. Uh, and I like the fact that it has no internal effects because I can I can mangle it, put way too many things on it like I've got here. Um, I am not being circumspect in this demo. <laughs> too much, too much. Um, and let's see, lastly, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, yeah, the sad part. This thing. This is the JHS uh, Emperor Chorus. Um, it is an excellent chorus, but it's going away only because... My synths, it doesn't like my synth. Uh, it really is sort of gain stage for guitars, and I've tried a bunch of different things to try and keep it from clipping, but it is clipping. Um, I could turn, obviously, turn the volume of the synths down, um, but uh, I don't know, the range, um, I turn it down, the noise floor comes up, it, it just doesn't work for me. So I'm actually going to end up putting this out um, on reverb or seeing uh, if one of my friends wants it. Um, it's an excellent chorus, but it, it's really meant for guitar players. Um, and I'm going to replace it with something. I'm not sure what. Um, certainly don't need another chorus. I can just stay in the box. But, uh, all right. So, what else did I want? Oh, I had one other thing I want to talk about. Oh, yeah, the technique. So, if we pull up the matriarch here. All right. So, release time. All right. So, this patch on the matriarch the release time of the envelope for the filter. It's slow to come up. Uh, it's slow to rise. It's also slow to release. All right. There's some decay in there, but if I let go of it before, basically when I release. All right. Slow rise, slow fall. Um, if you've got a monophonic synth and you've got this envelope, with a slow rise and more importantly, a slow fall. You're playing, you can use your, your touch to control the timbre of the sound based on playing legato, more or less legato, and you can then use that to raise or lower where the filter cutoff is by playing without having to use a knob or a mod wheel or anything like that. All right, so if I just tap notes out, You can hear that filter starting to rise, but it's rising really slowly. It's rising much slower than the a held note, right? And that's because I'm very short. All of my strikes are, all of my button presses are real short. So we get the muted sort of sound. But if I start holding the buttons down, I start playing more legato. Right? You can bring that filter up by playing more legato. And if you switch back to playing lightly, it'll go back down. Very simple, but useful, right? So you set that release, um, that release uh, 
time to be a little bit longer, half a second, a second, something like that. And then you use, uh, if you're, you keep your attack also about the same, so you get this swell. And then when you're playing these Berlin sort of arpeggiation, you're playing these Berlin patterns, by playing legato, meaning holding the notes down a little bit longer as opposed to very lightly tapping. Right? You get yet another sort of way of controlling your performance as you're going. And you could do this inside your sequencer as well by controlling the note lengths and whether they're connected or not. So let me just record this really quick. Let's see. There we go. Uh, how do we want this to be? We'll make it one bar. We'll make it two bars. Okay. So if we go look at the clip here, You see the length of these notes? There we go, nice and folded. All right, so they're all relatively short. Now let's grab them all and make them even shorter. And that closes the filter down, all right? They never have time, the press isn't there, so my gate that controls the filter envelope never really rises very far. far. Um, but if I make them longer, if I can select them all, here we go. All right? So you can control that. So let me duplicate this, duplicate this out. So now I've got, there we go, eight bars of this. Okay. And we will take these ones and make them a little longer. Let me zoom in a bit. All right. And then we'll take these ones and we'll make them a little longer still. We'll take these ones, make them a good bit longer, and then we'll let it drop back down. All right. So what we're looking at here, so we've got this light stuff. The filter should, cutoff should be low. It should start coming up, up, should be open close to full, and then jump back down. Let's hear what that sounds like. as the filter releases again. And you can use that when you're playing melody lines as well. So. You can do that. And so you can it's just another way of controlling the timbre of your performance um, without necessarily having to use your other hand to turn a knob or use your foot to rest on a pedal or play with a, you know, another control. You could do it all with the hand that's playing or if you're playing with two hands, with those hands can um, both play the notes and control the timing, control the pressure through velocity and then control something else, in this case filter cutoff, through how legato or staccato you play. Staccato being little teeny bouncy notes, legato being notes that are held down and sort of tied together. All right. So that's it. That's the production log for today. I'm going to have to edit this down until it's something relatively useful um, and tolerable because I ramble a lot. But I'm looking forward to the EP coming out. You'll hear about that. Um, join us. There's a link in the corner. Feel free to join us in our Discord forum if you're interested. It is gated by Patreon, but there's reasons for that. Watch that video if you want to understand why. Um, if you're in the market for a JHS Emperor Penguin pedal, um, you know, <laughs> send me a send me a comment. Uh, and other than that, I think that's it for today. Um, thank you for spending time with me here. And as always, you've been watching Synth Seeker. Have a great day. <laughs>